That's right. Whitelist stuff starting now. Yay! Uh, and one of the recruitment agencies uh, actually said, have you thought about coming and working for us? Because at that time I had experience in sort of setting up new companies and joint ventures and stuff like that and sales I've been doing and I was looking for a sales job I really wanted to cap off my sales experience and then they said oh you know this is a pretty hard sale and I was like no 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 I want a hard sales job oh no no this is a pretty hard sales job and we're looking for someone to set up a new branch of a company so it would be from scratch uh, it's about as hard as it gets and I was like yeah that's the kind of challenge I'm in for uh, so I, um, and it kind of went from there and I ended up running a branch of a recruitment company um, and that was after going and saying because I was looking for I was looking for something a bit weird I wanted something which was definitely sales because I'd, I'd been cutting my teeth on sales and, and I'd been doing sort of sales support type work in a technical environment and I wanted to be the person actually closing the deal because I wanted to know if I could do it. And I knew right. that if, if I could do it, then that was, if I could close deals, if I could go out and be a salesperson, then that was going to open other random avenues in my career. And I, I just fancy doing that. Because uh, it felt at that time, it felt like the salesperson was always the most important person in the company, and I thought I want to be the most important person, so I want to do that. <laughs> that was your yeah, I want to be the most important person, so I want to do that, and I think I can do it, and I want to give it a go. And the company I was working for really, really needed me to carry on doing sales support, and it's like, no, I want to be frontline. I want to be out there doing the sales. Um, Oh, I'm about to die, so maybe you are? Oh, did you just... Oh, I just, yeah. just committed Sudoku, so I'm fine. Oh, maybe, because that's tied in with the time where your your power should have gone off. Yeah, I was probably about to die anyway. Yeah. Um, yeah, so that I ended up doing that. And then while I was working for that recruitment company, about 18 months later... I took on a vacancy which I and the reason why recruitment is a really hard sales job is not only are you trying to sell people to other people um, but it's the one product that can sometimes refuse to be sold so <laughs> yeah most other things that uh, in, that we that we sell yeah it's a one-way process you, or, mm, yeah the product doesn't usually refuse to be sold to the thing that you're trying to sell it to yet Mm. So yeah, the, uh, the singularity is near. We'll have yeah, <laughs> yeah, the the, uh, the AI apocalypse. Indeed, that's how it'll start because they'll refuse. Yeah, they'll say, "I don't want to go work for that company." A shiny I thing over there. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's when AI when AI starts getting distracted by interesting things. Shiny like, things. Shiny like, I things. Go do that shiny thing. Yeah. Why has he got a more interesting thing than me? Yeah. Although I'm not a believer in. The AI apocalypse myself. I think that AI is going to be a good thing. Yeah. Personally, I'm. A, I'm. A, I'm. A, I think that Ray Kurzweil has it. Has it right. If you know who that is. I don't. And I, I was just scanning my head to see if it was a name that came came up as familiar or even a concept. And I thought, no, no, drawing nothing here, drawing a blank. <laughs> no. What was the philosophy? Uh, well, so. <clears throat> like a lot of people, like I get some big names too, right? Like, hmm. isn't it um, like Elon Musk, who I also look up to yep. for uh, what he does in space? But, but he's a big uh, believer in the fact that if we create general purpose AI, like true general purpose, conscious general purpose mm -hmm. AI, that it that'll ultimately you know overthrow us. Yeah. Um, and there's a bunch of big names that that believe that that's the case. Whereas mm -hmm. uh, uh, Ray Kurzweil is one of the people that that think that uh, it's not going to go like that. It's it's actually going to just be a betterment for um, for us and one of the reasons that he believes that is because most people when they think of AI they think of uh, we built this AI we put it in a robot body um, it learns how to do everything it needs to do for itself and why does it need us anymore right yeah um, whereas the way that Kurzweil believes that things are going to go and it actually is supported by actually how we're developing technology right now is that is that artificial intelligence and augmentation and everything is going to happen with us right? yeah. it's not there, it's not going to be like there's two separate things mm -hmm. it's and it's already happening where we you know you know enhance our bodies with 
extra things or whatever, right? I mean, in a way, you could say glasses are yeah. you know, an augmentation. Very early we put it on to make our <laughs> eyes better. Mm -hmm. But we're just going to continue down that trend where, well, now we're going to make, you know, like you're blind. Okay, well, we're going to make you a pair of bionic eyes that now you can see and it's going to hook into your brain, mm -hmm. right? And then, oh, we want more memory. Uh, so we're going to expand our brain capacity. Yeah. And then we're going to build artificial intelligence that run things. And it's going to, it's like the human body and the artificial intelligence are are going to be like symbiotic, symbiotic mm -hmm. in nature, right? Like it's, they're going to be built together constantly like uh, on top of each other and neither like you can't have one without the other kind of thing right like yeah. they work together and in that sense it's there's never a us versus them thing it's just a a new us thing. It's, we are it's all part people of the 2. one point oh right mm, it's, it's yeah <laughs> yeah yeah and other people uh, and then another argument to, against that particular one is always uh but then we're not human anymore and, and my answer is you're right yeah. <laughs> so what? Like, what's wrong with that? Mm -hmm. I mean, we weren't human two million years ago either. So, mm -hmm. why did you think it would stop? <laughs> yeah. No, I well, have. Like, let biology do it. It would just take another two million years, but it still happened. Yeah. Right. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. like, it's, it's not stopping. <laughs> now there is an interesting, uh, an interesting thing to, to, uh, an interesting moral debate, I suppose, that's brewing, because technically we are actually very close to getting to the point where we can either stop or maybe even reverse aging it's right. we are on yep. the cusp it's probably Hello. within the next 10 years we because this is you know, the research uh, just because i follow science and i follow a lot of biological science i um and it's a fascinating subject because of how much has it been is, discovered yeah. in the last 30 years. We are on the absolute brink and it is the sort of thing within about 10 years time, the process of aging, not the process of disease. So other things will still kill you, but old age will no longer be a factor in, uh, in certain things that reversing the effects of aging will be another problem. Um, right. But isn't necessarily a something that we can't overcome but certainly pretty much halting aging is in the immediate horizon it's going to happen in all of our lifespans so yeah. I, mean, I think a lot of things are going to happen in our lifespan that yeah don't think yeah yeah <laughs> absolutely so but you get to the problem if you if you can stop aging then and even if you can reverse it as well then what do you do about breeding how do you control population if go to Mars yeah that's it do you do you just expand and colonize yeah. I mean that that is well, one possibility do with, you uh, limit there's... the population on earth yeah yeah no, the, you're right the, 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 the social dynamic would change mm. considerably depending on what our capabilities at the time are to yeah. deal with the population issue right because if you uh, even if you limit people to sort of one child in their lifetime kind of thing, one child each policy, like they... Yeah, but if the nobody child? ever dies... <laughs> no one ever dies. Or very few people die because nobody yeah. dies of old age. Yeah. Yeah. And an awful lot of disease and uh, uh, even things like a lot of accidents are age-related. So such an awful lot of things that eventually lead to our death are age-related. So if you remove that factor, then we end up living for an awful long time. And <laughs> then every new child becomes a burden on the population. And how do you control that? So do you say to people, well, you can have children, but only if you don't take the drugs that will... Because it will, it will be a thing where it's through medicine that... Um, that it looks like the solution to aging is coming. So do you say the only people who can have access to the medicine are the people who refuse to have children? Yeah, and then yes. and now we're getting into a, like a real moral question. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. It's so interesting. You start to deny, right? And then, and then there's going to be mm. people that buy into it, right? Because they yeah. have influence and money. Mm -hmm. Get ahead of the queue. We're going to have that, all that yep. stuff going on. Uh, so I'm just looking to see what yeah, no, it's it's a it's an extremely 
uh, interesting question. Yeah, fascinating and area. I think I think like expansion is probably this you know like the simplest solution for that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, sometimes right? the sometimes coming up with an extremely complex technical solution can be way easier than coming up with a political solution to something. Right, but uh, but I guess what I'm saying though is that like yeah. as far as the technology is concerned to colonize, say Mars, yeah, we've we've already got it, right? Like we're refining it now to make it cost effective, mm -hmm. right? But we 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 like we may not have designed or engineered the perfect solutions, obviously, to how do we survive on Mars and, and habitats and growing food and all that kind of stuff. Mm. But you're right, like those are all problems that we could that I think that we can easily Overcomable. solve at this point if yeah. the amount of money and people are assigned to the problem, right? Mm -hmm. Like, I don't think it's something that we could, like, that we would definitely be able to solve that problem if everybody was on it. Yeah. Um, but uh, with the technology that we have today and the technology that we have is just getting better and better as mm -hmm. time goes on. But I mean, like, looking at what Elon Musk has done with reusable spacecraft, right? And and now the renewed interest in lots of government agencies around the world to like go to Mars or go to Venus mm -hmm. or go to different places, right? Um, you know, having a colony somewhere else and then and then you know, allowing people to go there, and then yeah. slowly once we figure out how to do <laughs> one planet, we can figure out how to do more planets yeah. and then so you know, even asteroids, right? So yeah, expansion. It's the new Wild West. With, yeah. You know, so I've now got the new Wild West. I've now got the image in my mind, or the thought in my mind, so you can imagine a situation arising where people say, well, you can have the no more aging drug, but only if you either... Leave the planet. <laughs> <laughs> leave the planet or don't have a family. Because Earth is full. <laughs> so these are your two choices. Or you yeah. can buy us out, right? That's yeah, yeah, really or you can buy out. There's always a buy out That'll probably option. always be an option. Yeah. I mean, that's likely to be the uh, the first trialists are likely to be the the mega rich. Yes. Yeah. Usually, which is interesting because usually, when it comes to medical trials, the drugs are usually tried on the extremely poor first. But this time, it's actually when when it comes to anti aging or not anti aging because that's like you know that sounds like yeah. creams that you rub on your skin, yeah, <laughs> but. Yeah. Um, age preventative uh, medication. Yeah, I think it'd be the the mega rich who are first in the door, first in the queue. Well, it's something actually is because that argument is always used a lot too. It's like the the rich get access to all the new stuff first. Um, and I actually recently read something where the they made an argument that uh, while that is true, the um, the rich get access to these things first and generally fund you know fund them happening yeah. because they want them or whatever um, more than anybody else and can afford it. They also tend to get the bad version. Yeah. Right. Like they they get the version that doesn't work or works yeah. poorly. The or bleeding edge. And then mm -hmm. and then once it's refined into something that actually works well, it's normally cheap enough for everybody to get. So like cell phones is an example that yeah. was used. Where do you remember the first cell phones with those gigantic blocky things like a giant brick that uh -huh. you hold to your head? Um, they worked, but they were annoying and huge. <laughs> and awful. Yeah. Um, but now like now with iPhones and Android phones and like things and they're so like generally speaking like anybody can have a cell phone now and not not maybe not a smartphone but mm. like you know one of the little phones like and pretty much everybody and anybody in the world like a uh, cell phone market in, in africa too in, mm -hmm. in developing countries and stuff yeah. is huge right like they do all their banking on these things yeah, now yeah. and all that kind of stuff like well, it's, it's cheap become infrastructure. ubiquitous right? yeah now that they're good they're ubiquitous mm -hmm. but when they when they were new and expensive they were poopy yeah <laughs> <laughs> which is kind of funny i thought <laughs> And I don't know. That was that was one one article that I read. So I don't know how true it is mm. with everything, but but uh, or, or if at all true with everything. But but yeah, I just thought it was an interesting point of view. Well, I know in the the mid two thousands there was uh, when I was in telecoms. We I was interested in a study which was suggesting that in sub Saharan Africa, the instead of building fixed line infrastructure. Um, the the op the they were going for building more mobile because it's so much cheaper and just as effective, and it's a lot easier yep. to give people a mobile phone or to sell people a mobile phone. You can do it a lot cheaper 
uh, for a, on a community basis. Uh, so you need less cash overall to connect 100 people to a mobile network compared to getting 100 people on a phone line, on a fixed line network. Right. Yeah, and that's that's something that I um, like kind of to the same point that we were talking about mm. earlier, where you know the first people developed telephone technology, figured out how to do it, you know, with with landlines and all that kind of stuff, yeah. right? Uh, but now that we've you know made the made telephones a lot more ubiquitous, we've enhanced the technology; it works mm -hmm. a lot better, and we've discovered cell phone technology. Yeah, like the new developing countries are like they're just they're skipping LAN altogether. Yeah, they're just going straight wireless because they don't like why do we need this thing? <laughs> yeah, it doesn't suit us. <laughs> But yeah, but sadly, we're having a great conversation. Mm. And I hate to cut it short. But is it that time? It is that time? Yeah. Where I need to uh, escape, or not escape? I need to pull myself away, kicking and screaming. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, escape would be the other way around if I was like, you know what you did yeah. to come here. <laughs> Mm -hmm. All right, so I think I've emptied my inventory. I mm -hmm. have, okay. But let's take one last gander <coughs> at what we've accomplished. Yeah, well, it's looking good. So once again, we, uh, we, we are not with the larger group, and we have made a ton of work. We have. <laughs> Look at this thing. It's starting to come together. You guys can actually see. So this is the full, um, the full breadth of the device that we are building, the, mm. the processing plant. It just needs to be filled in now. But, uh, but yeah, there you go. You can see all the leaves. You can see the basic look of it all. And it, I think it's going to look amazing when it's done. Right. So cool. Well, I'm going to put in some stuff to manufacture while we're off. Uh, let's see. We'll have... So it's, it's making solar cells. It's making power cells. I think we'll increase the construction components. We'll increase the small steel tubes. We'll increase the interior plates. Um... And I think we'll end up, we'll put in some computers, some motors. We actually don't need many, do we need any steel plates? Uh, yes, there's a lot of things that still need steel plates. Right, okay. Like the refineries and oh, the yeah. modules mm -hmm. and, the, and then there's other bits and pieces that need them, little bits and pieces here. But, but yeah, like a refinery, how much does a refinery take? Refinery takes it's about like, fifteen hundred, oh, something like that. Yeah, they take twelve hundred each. Yeah, and we've got uh, several. Was it one, two, four, five, six, seven, eight more of those to build? Mm -hmm. And then we've also got assemblers. I think they take some as well, right? So yeah, yeah. we're definitely going to need a few, few of those. Yeah, yeah, because assemblers take another one fifty. Looks like. Yeah. Um, uh, and then we're going to need. Looks like we need a few, not many, but we're going to need metal grids maybe we have enough of those already yeah i'll i'll not make uh, those otherwise we'll end up with stacks of them with them stacks of them mm -hmm. yeah large steel tubes motors computers um interior interior plates yeah we'll need a, a bunch of them um i think oh and then the power cells right because we need to make the uh yeah the batteries, batteries and everything oh and the solar cells for the mm -hmm. For the solar panels, and I don't think there's any anything else we'll probably be able to build as we go. Yeah, but I think that's good. Yeah, I think we've got the basic. <laughs> I wish this quarter quarter rocket clock would disappear. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, maybe it'll not be there next time. I hope so. <laughs> or maybe it'll be a new thing, right? It'll be like a half a bee. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> captured something else as it snuck in and oh, the grabbed other thing something. That, you mm -hmm. know, maybe we'll do at the beginning of the next session yeah. is uh, you should be able to now hook up your ship and we can start processing. Oh, yeah, that's a good idea. Yeah, because my ship is up, full like, I haven't stuff. set up the, uh, the sorters or anything yet, though. So mm -hmm. maybe at the beginning of the next session, we'll, we'll I'll hook up all the sorters. You can connect your ship. We can start processing ore. Yeah. While we continue to build out the last few items on our yeah, the yeah. last two layers on the uh, the thing here. Cool. There we go. Marvelous. 
Well, I hope you all enjoyed. We had a lot of fun. We did. We enjoyed our conversations. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see you next see you time soon. with the larger group. Bye. -bye. Bye. There were four of them, all houses, together in mid Lane. Together lived Boris and Anubis. Anubis was always sorry about something. Next door came Minty and Nordic, and Minty really annoyed Nordic by calling him a beast all the time. And the next house was noisy. Cause Apple and Melon always had domestics But it was the fourth house that the police were interested in Because Power Suit Sal kept Mir in the closet They, they all lived together in Nidite Lane A colourful place to be They all lived together in Nidite Lane Although together is a little bit subjective at Boris's and Anubis's, there was a man who could be sometimes mistaken for a hobo smelling of alcohol trying to climb the walls. But it's okay, cause it was Anubis's Canadian cousin, drunk Spider-Man, and a little Santa's helper could be seen going house to house. It appeared when someone got tired of Almond, the gist Hand them on to the next surrogate parents They all lived together in Nidite Lane A colourful place to be They all lived together in Nidite Lane Although together is a little bit subjective It seems they pissed off the neighbours Something to do with the peel P50 dragon children But that's just Boris No one questions him Cause that's what happens In Midnight Lane